Hey guys, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel and thanks so much for tuning into what's going to be a five beauty products video, which is basically just where I talk about some new beauty products, five to be exact, that have come across my desk recently. I've been using them, have some thoughts on them. Not all good, not all bad, just generally talking my way through some products. So let's go ahead and dive in. I have demos for this video, so I, in my mind, it makes most sense to go in the order in which I applied them. So that means I'm gonna start with foundation first. This is the Lancome Tante Idol Ultra Wear Makeup Stick. It has an SPF of 21. Um, I got this, I ordered this from Octoly. For those of you who aren't familiar with what Octoly is, it's basically just a place where you can go uh, pick items from the site apply to try them, and if the brand wants you to try them, they will send it to you for free. I applied to try this because I love a good stick foundation, um, and obviously I've put it to the test considerably. Also, just in general, stick foundations do tend to get used up a little bit faster, um, but this definitely reminded me of how much I really love the simplicity of a good stick foundation. I should say not all stick foundations are created equal. In fact, I have a video of my top five, but I have experienced you know, the what I feel like a lot of people still think of stick foundation, like a grease paint kind of thick, cakey sort of stick. There are definitely some new developments in the stick foundation realm. In fact, a couple years back, when Makeup Forever first launched their Ultra HD stick foundation, that was my holy grail for the longest time. New foundations come in, you try some things you, you that you like, and you know, you kind of tend to gravitate towards those. But this definitely reminded me of that. But I think it's going to be a little bit better for those with an oilier skin type. Like I said, I love the Makeup Forever, but it did develop a little bit of excess shine on me throughout the day. I personally didn't mind it because I, on me it was more of a healthy glow, but for those with combo skin that don't want any sort of excess dewiness or those with oily skin who don't need the excess dewiness, something like this from Lancome might do a better job for you. In terms of coverage, I was a little skeptical when I first picked this up because, I mean, as long as we're still comparing things, um, it's a little bit lighter than the Makeup Forever in terms of texture. Like it glides on and I think the Makeup Forever feels a little bit more greasy, but not in a bad way. Maybe hydrating is a better word. It just has some more hydrating ingredients in there. Um, this felt a little bit lighter, and so I didn't think it was going to build up as easily without getting kind of dry um, and not necessarily cakey, but emphasizing drier patches I have on my face, like around my cheek area. And I'm happy to say that's not the case. It really builds up beautifully very nicely on the page on Octoly um, where they have Lisa Eldridge demoing this. She builds it up in her under eye area and so I've tried that as well. It doesn't give you know the, the level of coverage that I typically like in my under eye area. I still have to go in with concealer but it still is buildable. I did, definitely do notice um, this adding you know as you layer it up it does add the coverage without adding a an unnatural look to especially your under eye area, which can tend to have those fine lines that is only emphasized by more product and texture. All of this is to say, I really, really like the stick foundation. I have a lot of, well, I mean, holiday travels coming up in November, December. I'm going on a long trip. Andrew and I are going to Thailand at the beginning of November. I'm so excited. So to avoid um, picking, you know, taking a lot of liquids and stuff, stuff that could spill or bust or whatever on the ride over or as we're in transit, I'm going to pack a lot of stick products. And so I I think this this will be coming with me. Next, let's talk some holiday products from Becca. I have their new, they sent me their new Opry Ski Glow Face Palette and an eyeshadow palette called Eye Lights Palette, Opry Ski glow collection. First of all, can you believe we're already talking holiday palettes, people? It is the middle of October. Let me have my Halloween. I mean, I'm super thankful that they gave, they sent these to me for the opportunity to try, but can we just pump the brakes on holiday for a second? It's all over Sephora. All of the limited edition sets are out now, and I, I don't want to feel pressure to buy and review and try when I just want to bask in my Halloween glow. You know what I'm saying? First, let's talk about the face palette. You get six uh, shades in this palette, two of which are limited edition or an exclusive to this palette. It is Winterberry, this blush right here, and Icicle, which is this uh, icy highlight right here. The rest are available full size and individually outside of this palette. So you get a bronzer called Bondi. The way they have this on the back is very confusing. Bronze Bondi. Um, then there's Winterberry, the blush. Icicle is that limited edition icy highlighter, almost with a blue undertone. And then there is which is 
like I said, permanent and a personal favorite of mine in addition to Champagne Pop. There is Rose Quartz, which has a slight pinky undertone, and then there is Blushed Copper that obviously has a more rich and bronzed undertone, or copper undertone, I suppose, duh. The formula here is slightly different than what you will find in the permanent singles if you were to buy these individually, which is nothing new from Becca. They've done it pre in previous limited, limited edition, ugh, the words today, previous limited edition launches. Um, and honestly, I know that bothers some people. It does not personally bother me um, because I care less about the ingredients they put in here and more about the quality. Like, you know, I'm not an expert in the cosmetic chemistry world. And so I'm going to rely on those that are an expert in the field to make a good formula and ensure that it delivers on all of the, you know, qualities that a full size would have. In the past, I've been pretty pleased with the, the, formulas that have been tweaked a little bit as they compare to the full size. This one I do notice a little bit more of a dryness to some of these powders. The blush specifically, depending on, um, you know, the texture of my skin, whether it's a little dry, if it's a little patchy, it definitely reflects in this blush. And that's not always the case for some blushes. Like some are just a little bit more smoother, more emollient, which kind of sounds weird to say about a powder product, but I don't know if it's like a dimethicone in there. It just helps the blush blend a little bit more smoothly and evenly regardless of my facial skin texture um, and that's not just this is quite not quite the experience I had with this blush the bronzer is beautiful I, I'm in love with that texture some of the highlighters are a little dry as well like the pink um, rose quartz I do find to be a little bit drier than the full size normally is and for me personally that just means I have to layer it up more to get the same kind of high shine pop and highlight I know and love but for those that aren't all about the highlight you can see from space that might not be a huge concern for you. I really like the exclusive highlight shade they put in here, which I did not think I would. The This icicle, like I said, is an icy white, but has this really pretty iridescent blue shift and undertone to it, which at first, I mean, it's not something that I personally would, you know, apply to the broadest part of my cheekbones, but if you saw my recent How I Like to Highlight My Face, it's this new technique I'm friggin' in love with. And in addition to highlighting, you know, the broadest part of my cheekbone, I will also take a shade right up here to my inner corner for like an extra pop. It adds a lot of, a little bit more dimension to my highlight. And it really just, I think, brings my highlight out more. It doesn't make it too much, I wouldn't say, um, but it just makes it a little bit more visible from all angles and just adds more dimension overall. And that's what I really love doing with that icicle, icing, icicle, whatever it's called, icicle shade. I love applying, you know, a color like opal or that rose quartz to the broad part of my cheekbone. And then I go in, it's actually what I'm wearing today is that rose quartz. And then I go in with that icicle shade and apply it right up here close to my eye. And it just like takes it somewhere new and special. I don't know. I just, I really like it. And in general, highlight palettes like this let you play around a little bit. So you're not constantly chasing around individual highlighters. You have them all in one spot so you can really mix and match to your heart's content in here. Overall, I think the face palette is pretty nice. Like I said, there are some formula consistency issues across this versus the permanent single formulas. As long as you know that going into it, I think it's a good collection of your favorite Becca uh, highlights with some some permanent or bronzer, even permanent bronzer, um, with the addition of some, you know, exclusive holiday shades, but it comes in a really great portable, sorry, I'm like avoiding showing you because I don't want to blind you and it's horribly fingerprinted, but for the most part, very, very beautiful. It comes with a nice big mirror in there. I love the idea that you have a full versatile face in one palette. Um, the same cannot be said for the eye palette. I Pr much prefer the face palette over the new eye palette they launched in this collection, which like I said earlier, is the Eye Lights palette. Um, in here, they have shades that were inspired by their permanent, uh, like their hottest shades, in addition to two hot cocoa and toasted marshmallow, which do not sound um, like any of the permanent shades. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume those are exclusive to this palette. Um, first of all, the lack of contrast um, is in part why I'm not a huge fan here. Like over here they have, again, with the weird way they did the naming on the back, Moonstone and Opal, which are these two over here. You can't tell much of a difference in the pan. You definitely can't tell much of a difference on the eye. Um, and the same kind of goes for this hot cocoa and 
What? Oh, hot cocoa and toasted marshmallow, the two limited edition shades here. You can tell a little bit of a difference in the pan, but overall these powders really lack pigmentation. And so on the eye, I just found there's really not much of a difference. In fact, if you can tell, I am wearing both of these. I guess you'll be able to see in the demo. I'm wearing both of these today, um, the brown in the crease and the hot cocoa in the outer half of my eye. And I just don't feel like the colors in this palette translate to the way they are worn on the eyes in general for having you know what seven shades in this palette I don't feel like you get the same sort of range of looks you could get from some other eyeshadow palettes that also have seven pants in them but just provide more contrast to give you just more utility with your eyeshadow palette which you know if you're buying a beautiful new shiny holiday set maybe utility isn't your goal you just want like a great beautiful collector's item if that's the case and this is for you, you know, maybe you'd be into this because it is very, very beautiful. But in terms of functionality, I can just think of a lot of other palettes that are still very beautiful, but will just ensure you get more uh, looks out of the deal. Also, the fact that all of these are highlight-esque, very shimmery, very glowy, made me realize that you can just get the face palette and they double as both eye, even though these were technically supposedly formulated explicitly for the eyes, um, there's nothing that says you can't use the face powders on your eyes as well, except they come with pans large enough to actually dip a face brush into. So again, this just provides a lot more um, utility in a palette. On to mascara. I have Lancome's Monsieur Big Mascara. This I also ordered from Octoly. On to some mascara. This is Lancome's Monsieur Big Mascara. This I also ordered from Octoly, and they actually sent it with an eye primer. This is the Seal, Seals Booster, Seal Booster XL. I'm not talking about the primer today, just the mascara. And overall, I mean, this is all I'm wearing on my lashes today, and I feel like the impact is really there. It has this big, fluffier brush, kind of with randomly oriented, but all um, bristles that are all the same length for the most part. It does have kind of a tapered end, so you can get the outer corner. Honestly, a very minimal brush for uh, how well it performed on my lashes. Normally, these big soft brushes tend to not lay product down as heavily or as dramatically as I would personally like. I'm a big fan of, you know, lots of volume on my lashes, which, which tends to require more product. I'm also a huge fan of a length along with my volume, and that can sometimes be a little hard to achieve together. You might get like lots of volume as you add that product on, but then you have five really big lashes and as opposed to like, you know, 20 really long, but also kind of thick lashes. But this mascara seems to do it. I don't think it's the most dramatic mascara I've ever used, but I also know that not everybody's looking to look like they're wearing falsies. And so this I think is a good, um, you know, it definitely takes your lashes up to the next level. I wouldn't say it's a natural looking mascara, but it's not quite like full on flare and volume, if that makes any sense. Um, the wear time is really nice. It uh, Oh, for those of you, because I, I feel like I always leave out the curl factor. Curl is not really something, I don't curl my lashes before I apply mascara. I'm not necessarily really ever looking for additional curl when I look for a mascara, so I always forget to mention it, but um, I, I also wouldn't say this is a huge curler. It does whatever shape it gives my lashes. It definitely helps hold that shape throughout the day, so if you do curl your lashes and you are relying on your mascara to help hold that shape throughout the day, um, this might be a good candidate, but I'm probably not the best person to talk about that because curl is not something that I'm really after. And I don't personally curl my lashes to understand if they'll really hold a super dramatic curl. But from my experience, it definitely holds its shape throughout the day. It doesn't flake. It doesn't, you know, run down my face or bleed or anything like that. Um, the, the formula is pretty steadfast, which is nice, but it's still not impossible to remove, which is also nice. <laughs> and last, moving on to some new lipsticks from Smashbox. These were intriguing to me. They're the Be Legendary Triple Tone Lipsticks. Um, and they are, as the name suggests, a tri-toned uh, gradient almost lipstick. Here, there are four shades here. This I'm wearing today is Red Ombre. There is also a nude, which I don't have in front of me because um, I packed it in my purse to kind of do a wear test throughout the, whoa! <laughs> The one that tried to escape just now was Sunset Ombre, which was very interesting. And then there is also a Berry Ombre, right? That's what it's called? Yes, which is more of a, um, I would actually say less of a berry and more of a purpley, a purple situation, as opposed to the combination of 
red purple that I personally find Barry to be. When I first shared a picture of the press package that these came in on my Instagram stories, I did a poll and I asked you guys, you know, would you wear these? Most of you said no and I was I was kind of surprised, but I think you knew something I didn't know at that point, which was that these are all gonna blend, like the shades in one of these lipstick is all, lipsticks are all going to blend together. Um, this is the first one. I know there are a couple of these out. This is like not the first time this has happened or the, something like this is launched. I haven't tried anything quite like this. And so I had yet to figure that out. But after, you know, trying all of these on, swatching them, then doing an actual wear test, I found that for the most part, even with the most contrasting colors, like in the Sunset Ombre, these really do blend together for the most part, which in some cases is good. I don't know that everyone wants such a contrast in their Ombre lip. You want, you know, a little, a little bit of subtlety so it's almost like a natural lip liner kind of situation, but these really do, I mean, like, I don't think, it doesn't look like I'm wearing two, let alone three shades on my lips right now, and I am wearing the red, um, red ombre. So in that sense, it is kind of a uh, fail in terms of what these are supposed to achieve. The formulas themselves are nice. They're a little dry, but not to the point of emphasizing dryness. I personally have a little bit of dryness and flaking going on with my lips right now, and I found they glided on really smoothly and evenly. Um, they last for a relatively long time. They're not totally transfer proof, but they're, it's not like they're a liquid lipstick that's kind of claiming to be long wearing. I would expect a little bit of transfer. Um, and the other thing that was kind of puzzling about these is how to apply. At first I was all excited to try them and I did my top lip and then I was like, wait, how, that means I have to flip it upside down to get the bottom lip and it's kind of hard to see that lip barrier when your hand is in the way. So it's kind of a trick to apply to the bottom lip, which was another sort of learning curve to get over. So, which was another sort of learning curve to get over and ultimately for as long as it takes to apply it and then clean up the edges because this is a rounded, uh, the edges here are rounded. You have to go, I found I had to go in and clean up around the edges and by the time you do all that, it's you might as well just grab two to three different lip shades and do your own sort of gradient lip or a, li a deeper lip liner um, and you know a lighter gloss or lip product and just kind of fake it like that. So kudos to Smashbox for trying to simplify that process for people but personally that just didn't hit the mark. And those are my five products. I'd love to hear if you guys have tried any of these. Definitely let me know in the comments down below. Besides that, thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.